Hi, my name is Michael Shields. I am the new brand ambassador for Christie's Direct 2020. So, head. Once you've got your clipper lines in, okay, I like to take this in a nice sharp angle. Some people do it nice and square. Mm, it's not right. Not for me. So I'm going to turn him round. And what I do, right, is comb everything out. Good boy. I tilt the head up. Where I've taken my clipper lines, as I say, just behind the corner of the eye, leave a wee bit of hair there and I blend it with my blenders in a straight line back. And even when you're stripping down under that hair there, when you strip it down, use your blenders to tidy that line because there will be a sharp line there. Because you're going from a wee bit longer here at the top when you're stripping it out into a really short, short coat here. So use your blenders just to dust over the top of it. And as I say, these wee double ended are fantastic. And that's how I get this part of the dog's face finished. Push the head back. So what we do is we push it back, feel for the Adam's apple. I always keep it as length, that same length, which is here. And I cut a straight line across, just like that. That's all I do, don't touch anything else. And then comb it down and that will get you the angle of the beard to sit perfect. If you can see it from the side. See that? And that's all I take off. Then I will comb the eyebrow. Right, I need to go to the other side of the dog to do this. No, actually I'll stand this side, it's okay. So I will comb the eyebrow to the side in line with the side of the corner of the eye, I cut a straight line. But getting back to the eyebrow, right, this is how I would teach my students and this is how I would do it. Now hopefully you can see this, right? First of all, comb it over from the outside corner of the nose to the corner of the eye. Tucking the scissors underneath, I'm using my blenders so that I don't leave too many sharp lines. I want it to be nice and natural looking. Straight line, okay? Then I come to the side of the dog, comb everything out, and you want on the the snouter this arched eyebrow coming from the corner of the eye out, and so that the dog can actually see. Now we don't do in a pet trim; we don't keep the snouter the snouter's eyebrows really, really long. We don't. We just keep them a nice, nice length that they're man manageable, and the customers like to see their dog's eyes. So we do it this way. Okay. So standing at the side of the dog. Holding your blenders, just blend it forward the whole way along the eye, just to take that sharp look out of it. Keeping your, your scissors straight, don't point them in the ways, don't point them out the ways, just keep them straight, just dusting over that coat, coming along there. And you'll see why now whenever I comb it. Because then we have that natural looking arched eyebrow and just take away the corner a wee bit, get underneath and tidy. You see that? And a lot of people, when you see these dogs done um, on, say, social media, Facebook and you see these really sharp eyebrows and all. Use a wee bit of hairspray. And as I say, the, the best one I use would be the eye groom. It is fantastic. It's nice and light, but you've got three different nozzle pressures on the top of it, so you just turn them. I don't have one here to show you today, but I think if you look back in some of the videos, you would see that I was using them. You just give it a light mist. Now, another thing I learned by going to seminars. Seminars and workshops, I always done what you learn at groom school years ago whenever I started doing it. And I always done a th uh, what they told me then was to do your thumb width between the eyes to, to create that separation between the eyes. Yes, but some people have wee skinny thumbs. So then you've got a, a really, the eyes are too close so they're 
too far apart or whatever. You have to bite fat thumbs or whatever it is, right? So I learned this from a guy who was doing a, a schnauzer in one of the demonstrations that I went to and it was a seminar. Seminars are very, very important because we're not all specialists. We all think we are, but we're not. We're groomers. I don't specialize in any breed. I can just do a lot of breeds because I learned by going and watching people doing them. These specialist groomers, as in people that show dogs, they know their breed inside out. One, I would mention her name, I'm a big fan of, but I don't want to on here so, but she'll know who I'm talking about. Fantastic with Schnauzers, fantastic with American Cockers, unbelievable, and her knowledge is unbelievable. But I went to this seminar one time, and it was fantastic, and he was a Spanish guy, and I asked him, I said, so where's the definition between these eyes? Because, you know, I've been told it was my thumb, and that was years and years and years ago, and I've been doing that for years and years until I went and asked him. And he said, no, it's the bridge of your nose. The width of the bridge of your nose is where you take your line to separate these eyes. And do you know what? Made a hundred million times percent. Now, we do think we know everything, but we don't. We just learn as we go along. And as for dog grooming, things change all the time, all the time. So guys, my moral of my story to tell you about this is get to a lot of seminars because they are fantastic and they will help you. And that's how I've been able to do it and learning all the different techniques and learning all the different angles and learning all the different things. Going to seminars, didn't learn it at groom school. Groom school, yes, you learn the basics. You learn how to groom dogs. You learn how to do a nice teddy bear trim. You learn how to do whatever it is you want to learn, you will learn in groom school. The skin types, the coat types, the different coat types, how it's done, hand stripping, the lot. But for the, for the specialist, the fine tuning, you've got to go to seminars or even look them up and watch webinars or whatever it is you can do to help yourselves because you just don't, we just don't know it all. Definitely not me anyway for one. But anyway, that's what I would do in the corner of the eye, just to give that nice definition. And then I blend out, see the hair that sticks out here? I just blend over it. A lot of people ask me, how do you stop that? When it's not as your blanks his eyes, whatever else, look at this big bulge of hair that sticks out here. It's supposed to be nice and smooth and like a brick-like face, nice squared off face. Then how I do it is I tilt the head to the side after doing the eyebrow and all this hair here sticking out, I just blend it. And that takes out that big lump of hair that sticks out there and then I blend this and make it nice and sharp. And this is my take on things. Everybody does things differently and however you get to this stage and however you get this finish, that's down to you. But this is how I do it and I make it myself. It's made me a lot, a lot easier for myself now. We're gonna move on to these ears and be very careful. I use normal scissors for these, right? So cutting round the dog's ears, taking all that f hair and finding that off. Now, I did clip it, but we've missed a bit. So we'll go over it again, right? Using a 10 and your wee Arco clipper, just holding them flat in your fingers so that you don't clip it off or nick the ear. Take all that inside hair off. Good boy. Now. I strip out these ears, right, but I don't take a while out often. Leave a wee bit of padding on it to try and match up with the top of the head. And I pull them out best I can, getting down to the edges. Now, get your finger and thumb. Always working away from the dog's ear. You never, ever, ever, and this is for all the new groomers, so I'm not even this at people that know what they're doing exactly, what they're doing, they're doing it for years. I'm naming this to all new groomers out there that have done it in groom school, but maybe haven't done a schnauzer for a couple of months or whatever when they go out on their own and they're doing one dog a day. Just remember this. Keeping the dog's ear flat and having a good grip on it so it doesn't jump. But don't pull the ear off the dog, obviously. But keeping the dog ears flat, using your finger and thumb as a guide, pulling out all the hair, and in between your finger and thumb is what you take off. You, you run your finger to the edge of the ear leather, and that's all you take off. Now this is all basic. Basic, basic, basic grooming. This is not an advanced, this is all basic, and as, even for the face and doing the face and all that's very basic, but it, taking it back to basic sometimes makes it actually a lot easier for you because you'll be struggling, you'll be doing this and doing that and trying to do this and trying to get this angle and trying to get that. If you take it back to using your straight lines, taking it back to the, the way that you were learnt, then you can't go wrong. 
because there's a lot of accidents happen in the salon around the years and things because dogs are fighting with you or they're jumping or they're nervous to the noise of the scissors or the clippers or whatever it is. So just always holding a firm grip on the dog. Just go around it nice and leave it nice and sharp. Now as you've seen, look, I'm working away from the dog. Normally we just cut around it like that, right? But for all you new groomers out there, be careful. Just take it nice and slow. You, have, you haven't all day to do the dog, yes? But at the same time, take your time and use your finger and thumb as your guide the whole way along. Cut your finger and thumb, that's your problem, but don't cut the dog. <laughs> so guys, after all that, get out your conditioning spray or whatever it is you're gonna use. I love this stuff. S Factor Serum, and I also, Amazing Tricks is my thing. Use any webinars or anything that you watch me do, that's my thing, but this stuff is just as good. It's lovely. Not sure on the, on the detangling of the coat, what that wet stuff looks like, because I don't use it on that. But I would use it as just a nice wee gloss going over the coat to give it a nice shine when I'm finished off grooming. And it smells beautiful. It's like another cologne. Now wait a minute, I've seen a wee bit here that I just want to fix before we take and tell you that I'm all finished. As again, back to the detailer. So you do, you do miss wee bits when you're working along, doing hand strapping and things. Or any kind of braid, any, any kind of grooming, you will miss wee bits. Now, I have a pull in my mouth. <laughs> I had a dry mouth there doing all that talking, but anyway. So just pull this back, another wee bit, just to blend this area. And I stretch this up and pull back. You can do that with your fingers and thumbs as well if you wanted to. But I just use the wee detail, the wee fine grooming knife. It's a fine tooth one. There's the blue one, there's the coarse one, the red one's the fine one, remember that. And I don't have the blue one here because I forgot it. My personal assistant didn't um, get me one. <laughs> but anyway, so that's how I, that's my take on a hand strapped schnauzer. Now I do do this, if I was to do this in a competition, this is exactly what I would do, but I would roll the coat a wee bit more. And I'd spend more time, you know, as in prepping the dog, coming up to the competition, I'd be getting it on every week and giving it, getting that coat rolled a wee bit better. Now with this here, I'm not rolling the coat. Yes, you can see the hard coat coming through. He is a pup. He's not even a year old yet. And I will be using him for my competition dog. So anybody there competes against me, you'll see me coming with one of these next, because he is absolutely beautiful. And he's a great coat to, to strip. Now, when you're rolling the coat, you'll obviously be rolling it every couple of days, or every once a week or whatever, and taking out all the long strands and getting the new coat to come through. But with this, I um, just it's just a salon one. So this is how I do it, and this is the, the way that I would recommend you should do it in the salon. And also, when you're finished, as I say, use this as a wee curtain knife, because sometimes the curtain knives are too wide and you're not getting the coat to go flat. You want it to lie nice, nice and flat, and nice and smooth. Yes, with a bit of roughness to it, but this is how I, I hope that this will help you with your everyday stripping out your wee schnauzers. Borders and things are a wee bit different, but for this kind of one, you want to have a nice wee finish on the dog. Hi everybody, if you have any questions on running the salon or dog grooming questions, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and follow us on social media at Christie's Direct. Oh, 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 oh,